the three biggest changes on what happened on Google. And those changes continue to become more and more relevant and more important than ever. No longer can you get away with duplicate content on your site. It's like a no, no, no. And you might wonder, what is a duplicate content? Is it just a page, the title, or specific things? Duplicate content is a surefire to get yourself when you get some penalty. Low quality links, pending back to your website, you're going to get those links. And long ago, almost any link to your website is a good link. When I first started in this business, any link to your website is golden. But nowadays, you actually have to have very specific links. If your website has been around for a while, there's a good chance you have plenty of link right now that link to your website or you link to that might be hurting your online presence, your SEO. Also, Google Maps is becoming the place, the, the thing that you want to be ranking on. It's almost impossible now to get ranking for a specific place without a physical office within that city or a jurisdiction that you want to rank for. This apply for basically any business, either boat dealers or boat rental or boat club is more of an example, but it can apply this to any business that you are running. So most boat dealer, for example, they really serve that 25, 50 max radius and really depending on where you are, some of them smaller. And right between those radius, you may have a ton of small little cities and town. A good example is if you live in the Southeast coast in Florida. So Fort Lauderdale, if you know that area very well, you know there's like town after town, little city after city after city. There is Sunshine, Davis, Plantation, Pompano, Deerfield, all of them just on top of each other there. I mean, I'm not saying they're super tiny, but they're just a lot, a lot of city to account it for, right? If you cover a 25 mile radius for you to get rank for, you might get rank for one city and the next city over. If there isn't anybody that provide that service or rent, try to rank for that place, make sure that you have every one of those pages on your site are very clear on where you are serving. Also, making sure the content is very, very unique to each of the pages. Long ago, every one of those CD to get ranking very well, it was super simple. You find the CD you want to rank for and where, wherever your lo headquarter location is at, you write the content for that specific CD and the service that you offer in that CD. And then you just replicate that same content over and over for CD after CD. Now, that has changed. You have to actually create, the content has to be unique enough where Google would accept it. The other things that people do a lot is instead of creating individual CD pages within the domain name, they create micro website. And this is a, a whole topic on its own. We can spend hours on the difference between creating multiple pages within your main domain versus create micro website to actually attract, bring people back to your main website. There is pros and cons to that. I'm not advocating this at all, but that can also get you duplicate content. So you have to be careful what that looks like. Those are tactics that used to be very, very relevant. They're not as relevant anymore. So duplicate content, making sure you do a complete audit on your website to ensure that all of your duplicate content are no longer duplicates. One way to do that is to ensure you have certain tools in place, use the tools that are available right now to get those duplicate content showing up and you know where they are. I've been in this business for a very long time. And back in the days, it was awesome to have just link back to your website. And that really has changed drastically since Google introduced a lot of those changes going back to 2011 when Panda just came out. So a lot of those changes gradually remove the ability to have a bunch of low quality links back to your website. So you want to make sure all the links that come to your website, you verify them and there are good links and there are ways you don't have to do this manually. There are tools out there that you can use to look at where all of your links coming from to come into your website. And what are the links that you're pushing out to people and how can you address them? What are the ones that's good and bad for you? 
So you want to make sure you address that. Also, the way you're going to do this is finding every single bad links. After you run a report on your website, on your SEO and online visibility, take a look at all those bad links and make sure you remove them, disallow them. Disallowing them right now is a little bit trickier because that has changed quite a bit in the last uh, 12 months, but you still be able to remove or make requests to remove them so that the damage they have been done to you can be removed. For example, right now, you may be number nine. For whatever reason, you are number nine in ranking from an SEO, indexability and visibility perspective, number nine on the page result for a specific keyword. So if that has to do with a lot of, many of the different key points that Google looked at, and part of it is the link building you have, let's say five links, that's very bad. What you want to do, if you were to remove those five links, and disallow them because they, they're very low quality, they're irrelevant to your industry, to your business or services. If you were to remove those five links, there's a good chance your number nine can jump to much higher, number five, number three, or even number one, if possible. 67% of the user that search for a keyword that relevant to a service, product, or business, they click on the first five results most of the time. And by now you probably heard, most people don't go to the second page on Google. So make sure you have those bad links removed so you can at least give yourself a leg up on this infinite battle. Also work to diversify your link quality. So after you make your audit, you figured out all the bad links, you remove them. Now your next big task is to ensure that you have quality, good, relevant links. And there are tons of good relevant links for marine business in general. So there's all the different associations, usually your local chambers, your local nonprofit organization, or some good links you can get. But also there are tons of other links online that don't get you banned from Google that are very good quality that you can use. And by using some of the tools we're going to share with you, you can actually use those tools to see where you can get high quality links as well. The real business address. As you know very well, Google really, really changed the local search since 2014. How people look for business, look for services, look for product related within proximity to the search that lo they're looking for. Google really stepped up their games in the last even two years to really help local businesses a uh, scale up there. So those changes that happened way back continue to get enhanced and make local businesses get listed on Google Maps. Some of the key things that you want to do, if you already have your business registered with Google Business Profile, you want to make sure you go in Google Business Profile and double check your business information. Okay, make sure you don't have multiple addresses and multiple accounts. Make sure you don't have PO boxes as your address. Google does know different addresses. Virtual offices has been and will continue to be one of those things that Google dance around for the longest, and they still don't have a, a straight answer for that. So because a lot of people take advantage of it. And I know after COVID, they really start looking at home addresses to help get business listed because they realize a lot of people close their physical office and move home. So a good way to get listed on Google Maps with your home address, and you can even hide that address without people seeing it, Google would know what it is. You want to make sure you update that information and in Google and making sure the information in there is correct. This goes without saying, you need a real physical address within that city that you want to rank for. Now you can rank on a different city that do not have an address if the city is close enough to you. Let's take the Fort Lauderdale area, for example, if you're familiar with this space, when you're in Pompano Beach, the city over is Oakland's, the, the next city over, I believe is, is Deerfield. So all of those different little cities, if there is nobody selling or has the same services as you do, which is very rare, you can possibly rank for that specific location because what Google looked at when they tried to rank you in the map is they look at 
proximity, which is how close you are to them, relevancy, how relevant that key search, that keyword you looked at for. And then they looked at now your business. What is it that your business offer where that information could be displayed? 